So, I wrote a book. There she is! Isn't she pretty? Oh my god. Oh my god, too. Oh my god, she's real. Everybody shut up! Disinerbus from the Ashes is a new adult urban fantasy novel set in the year 2116. Wizards, now known as Magi, have been revealed to the world and it didn't go well. You know humans, they're always looking for an excuse for a new world war. Always looking for something new to hate. We're talking magical creatures running around the planet causing destruction, climate change, governments collapsing and reassembling religious resurgences. It's a fun time, it's a circus. The main character, 18-year-old Felix Brasher, is a fire magus who's also a little dumb cinnamon roll who makes bad, bad choices and oscillates between I'm aimless and I don't know what I'm doing with my life and fuck the world, I hate all y'all. So basically, what every young adult feels while the world burns down around them, except Felix is also holding a canister of gasoline and a lighter, so yeah. <laughs> He and his bestie Rosie, who's also a Magus, get the chance to study at the renowned Dragora Institute of Magic in the far-off Magus homeland in the Medean Empire, which is actually kind of based on, you know, Tir Nanog, you know, magical land just off the coast of Ireland, Ooh. which sounds great until Felix discovers that his magic basically makes him a perpetual weakling. See, Magi have a hierarchy based on eye color. At the very top are pearl-eyed magi with white irises, followed by golds, amethysts, and at the very bottom, cobalts. Pearls are the most powerful and the rarest and control the Medean Empire. And as you go down further, the weaker magi get, the less abilities they have, and especially in the Medean Empire, the more um, poor they get, the less uh, government representation they get, yay. And guess what Felix is? Joy. So a lot of the story follows Felix trying to overcome these barriers in order to improve his own magical abilities, which includes making an awful horrible no good deal with this creepy guy in a hood and mask named Vegas, who's kind of part of a cult, you know, cults. There are cults in like every piece of media that I experience, so I'm just like, fuck it, they're going in my book. Okay, fine. And Vegas is all, hey kid, can I offer you some darkness? Can you tell I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan? Can you tell? And little does Felix know that there are much darker plans in store for himself and his friends. I like, oh God, there's an ant. Hi, ant. Hello. Oh no, it's a tiny spider. It's a little spooder. I don't know why I'm letting it distract me from this, but I am. Hi, spooder. Hi. I like to think of this as sort of an anti-chosen one story. A lot of writers, when they start out, wind up making their characters into these picture-perfect, idealized people who are invincible and powerful and beloved. And I kind of did the opposite with Felix. He's a runt. He's a weakling. And he's very, very dumb, despite his best efforts. So the crux of the story is, as Felix meets new people, falls in dumb gay love, he's bi, by the way, and learns more about himself, is he gonna realize what matters most? Or is he going to be a dumb bitch who ruins some lives in the name of being able to rain hellfire down on his enemies? So now with that elevator pitch out of the way, I'm going to have my friend Chris read the actual synopsis I wrote for my book. So take it away, Chris. When your greatest dream is born from spite, will it make you truly happy? Indoctrinated from birth by his devout, God-fearing father, Felix discovered his magical abilities in a terrifying incident. Ever since that night, Spite has festered within his heart, shaping his desire to become a powerful sorcerer. And much to his surprise, his dream may become reality, as he receives a chance to study at the prestigious Dragora Institute of Magic in the Medean Empire. There are secrets lurking in the shadows, however. An enigmatic masked man hangs just out of sight, stalking Felix and fueling the flames of his hatred. And now, as Felix grows closer to realising his dreams than ever before, a new, darker destiny threatens to corrupt his ambitions. As Felix forges new relationships with fellow Magi from all across the world, he comes to discover more about himself and what he wants out of life, with an infinite number of winding, crisscrossing paths ahead of him. Which will he take, and where will that road lead? Who will he choose to be? They say to write your book synopsis in a movie trailer voice, so... Yeah. Anyhow, that's the basic story. 
Besides Felix, the main characters are Rosie, Felix's BFFFL, kick-ass black girl, the only person in this book with her shit together, who uses nature magic. Argent, Felix's love interest, walking gay disaster, deals in ice magic because I'm trash for a fire and ice dynamic, let me tell you. And Zara, daughter of the school's headmistress, Ramita Hakim, innocent shy girl who must be protected at all fucking costs, and cobalt-eyed Windmakus, who's not so sure she can follow in her mother's footsteps, especially because she can feel she can feel the rich people judging her for her cobalt eyes. Oh, there's also Felix's main rival, Lucas, who is basically the pompous rich kid, a pearl, thinks he's hot shit to cope with the fact his family is trash and no one's ever told him they love him before. You know, basically what we all wanted Draco to be. <laughs> I am not ashamed of that one. Let me tell you. Apparently, while I was writing this book, I created a lot of unexpected gay tension between him and Felix, so... Can't wait to see all the fan fiction for these two. Oh, Jesus Christ. I started work on the story back in 2016, towards the end of my senior year. Funnily... Funnily high. Why did I write funnily high? Was I high while writing this? Jesus. Funnily enough, Dis and Erebus actually started out as an idea for an animated slice of life series that I decided to turn into a series of novels. And five years and eight drafts later, here we is. So this is the cover that Demonza created. Felix's magic actually falls on the darker side, so he uses blue fire, which I asked the designers to represent on the cover, along with an overall gold aesthetic for the first book. Didn't expect the wood carving aesthetic, but the moment I saw the draft for this one, I was like, yep, that's her. That's the Cenerabus. Oh, it's everything I dreamed of and more. Actually, like, while I'm working on this, I'm probably gonna ask Demonze if I have permission, because um, when they, when you work with them, they give you three cover drafts and then you choose which one you like best, but you only get the rights to use the one that uh, is finalized. So I'm gonna ask for permission if I can show off the other two cover drafts. They were pretty, especially one of them in particular. The reason I didn't go for them is because they looked more like movie posters than book covers. And one of them was very, very aggressively cliche. And I did not like the way that the title looked. And also um, the other one that I almost picked looked like Discount Hunger Games. And I was like, nope, mm -mm. Actually, funnily enough, the cover I thought was really cheesy and I really didn't like Out the Gate because it had Felix like um, back to the reader on the cover. And I don't like having real people on my covers, but the castle on that cover was gorgeous. And on the hardcover edition of the book, they actually put it on the back. So God bless. Especially love the little phoenix in the sea. Disenerabus has a bunch of important symbols, mostly to do with flowers and you guessed it, phoenixes. I don't know, my favorite mythological creatures has always been phoenixes. Fuck dragons, they overrated. You know what, I blame this on being a Sag, fire sign, sun, hello, and just the whole rebirth thing, it's cool, it's cool. Phoenixes are elegant, they just are. And I always root for the underdog anyway, so. Creepy Vegas guy has a phoenix named Cinder. She arguably has more character than Cinder Fall, so hey. Shut up! So along with this ebook cover, here is also the full wrap for the paperback version, the dust jacket for the hardcover, and the case laminate for the hardcover itself. But that's the hardcover without the jacket. Future me, insert some clips of me holding the physical books to show off to everyone right about here where I'm also crying. I cannot tell you how weird it feels holding a physical copy of my story in my hands. Like, this is a thing that I invested five years of my life into. It holds shards of my soul, my experiences, and these characters are pretty much my children that I'm sending out into the world. Both wonderful and terrifying? Oh god, is this akin to empty nest syndrome? I'm just proud I've gotten this far, and I can't wait for people to read it and enjoy it. And moreover, I can't wait to work on my next book because, oh my god, creating and publishing your debut novel is one of the most exhausting and stressful experiences you will ever fucking endure. If you want to know more about the book, its story, the world, or anything else, feel free to leave your questions below or send them to my business email that'll be shown on screen now or probably a different email that I created solely for Q&A because like, I don't know how many I'm gonna get and I don't want my business email to potentially be flooded with this. Maybe I'll answer it in a future Q&A video. Who knows? Dis and Erebus will be releasing on November 16th of this year. Wow, the same week as Red Taylor's version. Would you look at that?
Actually, I went to the effort of figuring out all the characters' like favorite Taylor albums because I am trash. Felix is a red stan. He likes heartbreak. He likes he likes to be in emotional pain. His main color is also red, so that helps. And Dis Erebus is also available for pre-order now in ebook, paperback, and hardcover. All the links are listed below, as well as on all my social media, and my now-published author website. Yay, I feel so official and fancy. I'm tired from setting this all up. Oh my god, I need a good chiropractor from how often I've been hunched in front of my laptop organizing all of this. And if you want to get a sneak preview, you can check out the first four chapters on my author website through the link in the description, and also get the fifth chapter sent directly to your inbox by joining my new email newsletter, also listed on my website. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do with said newsletter beyond talking about random media I enjoy, so it's bound to be an entertaining shit show at least. So yeah, my book drops in November, and you can pre-order it now. Boop, boop.